So this is to set up a Spark with a Jupyter Notebook along with supporting R and the Python. So to begin with, you're going to have Python 3.6 or better. If not, you can set up the Python 3 from this link. So to test on my Mac machines, cool. So I got 3.10, so fine. Next, and to see if I have PIP. If not, you can install PIP from here. Test. I got PIP. OK. Next, we need to have a virtual environment uh, set up. So then we need to first PIP install virtual EMV. So we install the PIP virtual EMV. So next, we need to create a virtual environment. Um, so our virtual environment, let's call MySpark. So by executing virtual EMV, MySpark, it will create a folder called MySpark under your directory. Okay, so my Spark folder should be created. So now we can enter the virtual environment by executing the activate. So just say dot space my Spark forward slash bin forward slash activate. So now I'm inside the MySpark virtual environment. And to exit, you just say deactivate. And to enter again, just now I'm in the MySpark virtual environment. Inside the MySpark virtual environment, we're going to install Jupyter Notebook. All right, so Jupyter Notebook has been installed. So we need to set up a password for our notebook. Jupyter dash. So enter your password. Enter again. So password has been set up. So now we can test to see whether Jupyter Notebook works under the virtual environment, my spot. Okay, so just open the browser. Okay, so we'll be asking for your password. Just enter. Okay, so you're inside. All right, so then we move on. Control C to exit. Next, we need to install the JDK 17. And uh, Spark supports a few versions of the JDK, and with JDK 17 being the latest. Uh, the JDK 17 also uh, the supports the Apple Silicon. So, although my machine is Intel.
copy this link. All right, so inside the JDK 17 page, looking for the JDK 17 appropriate for your operating system. So my operating system set will be So I'll be choosing the the TGZ file. So that way I can control where I need to put the Java home is. So I just install this, the x64. All right. So it's inside the download folder. I'm going to copy this download folder and to my home directory and paste it right here. So I should have the JDK. All right, so I have the JDK 17. I just download it, then just extract it. XCF All right, so now I should have a folder called JDK 17 right here, JDK 17.0.11.jdk. Contents, home. Okay, so this is the Java home. So JDK 70.11.jdk contents slash home. So inside you have the bin directory. Okay, so this is a home slash a JDK a Java underscore home forward slash bin. So inside you should have a Java and a Java C. Okay, so this is the Java home. All right, so copy it. C H S H R C. Okay. Make a backup copy of our of my current .chrc in my home directory. Okay, so now I just edit it. So I'm going to delete these for now. I'm just comment it out. Comment these two lines. Okay, so I need to define the Java home. Java home equals to this. And put the Java home bin into the path. Force dollar export path equals to dollar sign java home bin pass append to the path okay 
And then I just source. Okay, so now test. So I got a 17.0.11 JDK. So this is okay. So after JDK is done, so set up Java Home and Java Home slash bin into the path. The next one we need to download the Spark. Okay, so download the Spark just over here. Go to this link and clicking Spark 3.52 bin and clicking again so it will be downloading the spot 3.52 with Hadoop okay so I actually already download before so just copy the spark.tgc file and again paste into my home folder okay so in this cases I want to create a new folder called Spark Software, Spark underscore software. And then I'm going to paste the spark.tgc file into the Spark underscore software folder, which is under my home directory. Spark underscore software. Okay, so I'm just going to expand it. And expand this TGZ file. Okay, so let's change the name because that's space, open parenthesis, once, close parenthesis causing trouble. So I just remove them. All right, so now I'm just going to extract this TGZ file. Okay, so I end up have a folder called Spark 3.5.2-bing-hadoop. I'm going to change this folder name just simply called Spark.
Okay, so now I end up having a file called Spark, a folder called Spark, and also this TGG file. I may just get rid of this TGG file. So I only have one folder called Spark. So inside the Spark, these are Spark, the, the directory infrastructure. So this is the Spark home. So user user Spark underscore software forward slash Spark. So this is the Spark home. And then same thing, we are going to add it into the chrc so next time when you're logging in so these environment variable will be set so you do export spark home and export path path equals to dollar sign spark home forward slash bing colon dollar sign path okay and one more time we are going to source the new dot chrc files source space dollar sign forward slash dot c s h r c okay so by now the spark home bin directory is also inside the uh, inside the search pass so we can just test it hi spark so it works so now spark has been set up next And we need to install R uh, to the Jupyter Notebook. All right. So if you don't have R, and then you just, you can download R from right here. Okay. So we only really need is to install R. Uh, we don't really need to use the R Studio because we're going to using Jupyter Notebook. Uh, in lieu of the R Studio, so we just simply download and install R. Okay, so download R for the Mac OS. Okay, so you're gonna choosing which R. So then, if you have an Apple Silicon, you're going to get this link. If you're using Intel Mac, you're going to using this. So I'm going to download the x86 version okay so I'm going to click in here and I'm going to just simply double clicking on the package to install it continue continue agree and I'm going to continue continue so enter my Mac password. All right, so R is done. And we, we may as well move to the trash. Okay. So now we are going to test if the R, how if R works, okay? So now why not I just let me deactivate and let me out of close this terminal and reopen the terminal. Just making sure yes, any new environment variable change is going to be captured. So same thing, and first thing is, I'm going to go to the MySpark virtual environment. So therefore, dot space, MySpark, forward slash being, forward slash activated. So now I'm inside the MySpark. So it is very important 
you're going to execute the R script inside the virtual environment because the virtual because it will be looking for the Jupyter notebook that belong to that virtual environment. Okay, so firstly, I just want to test R. So it does work. All right. So then I exit, exit, and I don't need to save the workspace image. And also I want to R script. R script. Okay, so R script works too. So R script is very important. It must be in the search path because the Jupyter Notebook cell is going into inside the Jupyter Notebooks each cell is going to call the R script. So if the R script is not on the operating search path, then the R notebook will not work. So now we are going to enter the R again. We are going to execute this command because this command is going to install a Jupyter Notebook kernel for the R. So just execute line by line. So first line, All right, then second line, install package PG, uh, PKG down. All right, and next we can ignore the print statement. So install package dev tools. Okay, so dev tool is installed, and also we are going to ignore the print and execute dev tool. Uh, dev tools install underscore GitHub, which is the the, the GitHub uh, the IR kernel, which is Jupyter Notebook kernel for the R, the R kernel. So this package has a more recent version available. It is recommended to update all of them. Just choose all, one. All right, so this is our kernel has been installed. And then execute system file kernel spec package IR kernel. Okay, and then execute, ignore the print, the last line, IR kernel install spec. All right, so this is, this, this is done, then we exit out. And we don't need to save the workspace image. Okay, so sounds good. So now we are ready to Launch the Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so asking for password, just enter the password you just set. that Safari has some problem. Just go to the Chrome, localhost 8888, and enter password. Okay, so sounds good. So now we are ready to, uh, if we want to create a new book, and clicking this new, then you will see Python 3 to create a Python notebook and an R and to create an R notebook. Okay, so we need to test on whether the, uh, the Python notebook can work with a Spark. 
And also we want to making sure is our notebook works with the Spark as well. So for Python, the first thing is you notice we have set up the environment variable called Spark underscore home. So this is very important. So the Python notebook and our notebook is going to look for the, the Spark underscore home content and to determine where the Spark, the, the, the folder is located. And they will use, uh, they will access the, it's a software infrastructure under the Spark home folder. So the, for the Python, there is a, the, the library called find Spark and you're going to install that find Spark one time. So any after that, you don't need to install anymore. You can come it out. So to install the in this case is the find spark, you can execute on the command line pip install find spark, or you can actually execute within the notebook also one time. Yes, you need to start with a percent and then followed by the operating system command. In this cases, it will be pip install find spark. Just execute. So it will install the find spark. So now find spark has been installed. So you don't need to run find, uh, pip install find spark anymore. So you can simply comment this out. So next time you don't really need to. Okay. So next, after you install what's going to do, you are going to actually before find spark in it, you actually have to say import find spark. And then after that find spark in it, it will be, it will basically tell the notebook where the Spark Home is located, and the Spark Home is defined in the environment variable called Spark underscore Home. So, so now, Spark Notebook. This notebook knows where the Spark Home, uh, Spark Home is located. All right. So now it's ready to uh, create the connections, which is Spark Context and a Spark Session. In this cases, right, and to the Spark. So to begin with, you can see why you want to, uh, the SC means the Spark context, right? Why you want to execute the, the, the execute the SC dot stop. Basically you want to stop the stop Spark context, right? As that's because the, the in case, because Spark context can, can only be, uh, the connect one time, right? It's already connected. You try to create another Spark context. You're going to be, uh, the receiver error. Okay. So to do that, you first need to stop the Spark context if the Spark context already created. So you notice this is try. So basically is it will execute, try to see if there's a Spark context and then let's close it, right? Let's just stop it. So because after that, you'll be able to create the Spark context. All right. So however, if the Spark context has never been created, then this command will be thrown into the error. So that's why the except logic part to the except and in the except it just do nothing pass right so if however the spark for whatever reason the spark context has been created has been uh, connected to right and then this sc dot stop will stop it and with no error so either way there will be no error if there's an error it's just except path okay but the downside is you'll be having a, a spark context that has been stopped regardlessly okay right so you'll be able to run the sc equal to spark context set the, the method again okay so now it's also set the error log to be the uh, the, the the log level to be the error so which means uh spark will not log unless the log level is error or more severe all right so in this cases you have a cleaner the the error log okay right so and then it will create a spark session so if you're using spark sql and spark machine learning and you need this spa session to be created, right? And in this case, the spa session is created on top of the spa context, all right? So just execute. So actually notice, it, it realized where the spa home is located. So that's why these command can be successful, right? And then after that, you already have the SC. And then once it's done, you simply stop it sc dot stop so after that you can reopen the spark context again okay so this is the python notebook all right so now let's take a look at the jupyter notebook uh, uh the r notebook okay so the r notebook doesn't have a spine spark but it has a similar logic like the fine spark does it's looking for spark home direct spark home environment variable so it's basically looking for the environment variable called spark underscore home so 
by doing this n char c stock get env okay right so if this the conditional statement returns less than uh less than one okay right so which means spark underscore home has not been defined right so therefore it's going to define the spark underscore home for for you in this cases you are going to plug into whichever directory that has a spark right so in our cases looks like it's not supposed to be the the forward slash document and forward slash docker and simply should be spark software spark okay all right so after that is uh, the setup the, the looking for spark underscore home and looking for r the the library within the spark underscore home just execute it so it will take some time when you see this star so it's not done so now it is done all right and after that it's reading a the my, uh, the empty cars csv which is under the data directory right in the data directory so you don't need to bother this right if you have your own the, the 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 data file to import so this is just for demonstration okay so in this cases it creates a spark sql data frame called mt car right and then you can display out the head of the mt car all right so that concludes set up the jupyter notebook with a spark that supports python and supports r